everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Yellow Tape. My name is Julian. I'm happy to have you guys with us. And if you cannot tell, we are here in person. Me and Nitty, we have found each other finally at last. No more Zoom, at least for these next couple episodes. And, you know, it's awesome. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I'm really excited. Exactly, exactly. You know, finally to be here in person. Nitty's here again to discuss to us, discuss for us how to make a DNA, DNA profile from start to beginning. And I told you guys last week that uh, uh, maybe my my position would be getting a uh, sample that we would have to figure out if it's blood or not. Like if it's a reddish brownish stain at a crime scene, we would have to figure out his blood. I would do my testing to prove that it's blood in which, and then after, if I prove that it is blood, I would send it to Nitty and she would create a DNA profile. And Nitty, I will let you take it away. Yes. Um, thank you, Julian, once again. And we are excited to be here in person and I will get right into it. Um, so last time we made a great deal out of extraction, getting the DNA out of the nucleus. Uh, but there is one more thing that you're going to learn from this podcast, if nothing else, is that there is DNA also in the mitochondria and mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Yep. So, <laughs> I hope you will sound so sorry. No, keep on, keep on, it's fine. So yeah, so mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Uh, so the nuclear DNA is basically inherited from your parents. So you get half from your mom and half from your half from your mother and half from your father. But the mitochondria DNA is just from your mother and it is a circular DNA. Uh, so last time, like I mentioned, that we talked about extraction, and now we are going to go forward in the forensic DNA analysis process. Um, so just to reiterate my point, there are five major steps uh, in forensic DNA process. The first one is extraction. Mm -hmm. The second is quantification. All right. The third is amplification. Okay. What is the fourth one, Julian? Uh, the fourth one is after amplification is separation and extract, not just separation, not extraction. Right, exactly. So the fourth step is separation and the last and the final step is analysis. Uh, so now I will move on to a little bit about quantification. So quantification is nothing but the DNA, how much DNA you just extracted um, through the processes which I mentioned last time because you want to know if you have too much DNA, it will screw up your analysis, it will blow up your electropherograms. Uh, if it's too less DNA, you might lose some vital information. Uh, so before even we proceed in moving forward for our analysis or doing amplification, it is very important for us to know the amount of DNA we just extracted. Uh, and before we get into amplification, there is a very important term to keep in mind is STRs, short tandem repeats. Okay. Um, so what are STRs and what is short tandem repeats? So short tandem repeat is nothing but a sequence of DNA, uh, which could be um, pairs or four base pairs or five base pairs in length okay. is a short tandem repeat. Now this small sequence is repeated multiple times. Um, so this number of times the short sequence repeats uh, makes us different from every other individual. So that's what kind of defines our individuality. Mm. So say, for example, Julian, okay. you uh, had a repeat at a particular location on your chromosome, an STR repeat, uh, which is four repeats and uh, your allele call is nine. That means that this four repeat units basically happen nine times. Oh, so these four things happen nine times in a row. Right, exactly. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So if your four repeat unit is ATAT or ATGC, this okay. ATGC sequence happened nine, nine times, times in a row. Okay, nine okay. times in a row. And if at that same exact location uh, on the chromosome, um, there's also ATGC for me, uh -huh. but that repeated 15 times. Uh -huh. So now you are nine, but I am 15. Right. So you are different than me. Mm. So this is what the individuality is. I was talking about in the last episode, how okay. one person differs from another person. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's interesting. 
and uh, so like I said after we quantify and just I gave you a little bit brief about the STRs I aim in the next step is to amplify a specific region in our DNA uh, and this is called amplification so amplification is nothing but xeroxing multiple copies of a particular sequence of DNA that you're interested in you say xeroxing xeroxing like a copy machine yes oh, exactly you're dating yourself <laughs> Exactly, like a copy machine. <laughs> <laughs> so you make multiple copies of uh, DNA molecules that you just extracted uh, of a particular sequence. Are you, you making multiple copies of those uh, standard uh, STRs? Yes. Uh yeah. um, so after you make multiple, multiple copies of this particular sequence of DNA, sequences of DNA that you're looking for, the next step, which is what, Julian? After the amplification? Yes. Is separation? Yes, thank you. <laughs> so the separation is done via, an inst it is done via multiple platforms, but what most commonly used is capillary electrophoresis. Um, so we won't get much into that in today's episode. We will make another episode where we'll explain you what it means um, because it is, uh, in-depth knowledge of the instrument is also really important, but that's not the point of this episode. So what happens is using this instrument, we basically separated sequences out based on their molecular weight because the sequences are made up of nothing but different base pair units okay. and different base pair units have different weights associated with it, molecular weight. So because of this weight and this, this, the weight it carries, they are separated based on their weight and the time it takes for it to travel. So when this separation happens and the allele cards that I was talking about, the number of repeat units is kind of shown in us, um, call it electrophorograms. So basically that's what the entire DNA pipeline or the process is. So you extract. Okay, let, let me see how yes, to over it. Yes. So you extract, you have your different types of extraction. I know um, on the last episode, you talk about uh, differential extraction, yes. which is like, if it's like a male and a female in that um, mixture of blood from a crime scene, then you can you're able to um, switch out like regular epithelial cells, which are like skin cells, and then you can also uh, differentiate out uh, sperm cells. Right. So the way to put it is in differential extraction, you can separate the female fraction uh -huh. from the male fraction. Right. Okay. Okay. So that's just one of the ways you can yes. extract among the. Okay. And then after that is. Um, Quantification um, uh, is quant, quantification, and quant is, is that where the, uh, I guess that's knowing how much physical DNA you have, is that where the STRs come into place? Yes. So, and the STR is a short tandem repeat, and again, it's just, you said on, on every, because I know most humans are like 99.9% .9 the same, right? 99.7% the same. Uh, so we're all so point, three, zero, three? Point three. 0.3% percent different. Yes. And that different area is what your is where the STRs come into place. Right, exactly. And again, that's the non-coding region. So when I say non-coding region, it kind of helps us not get to get in like it doesn't define our characteristics. Mm -hmm. So the ethical dilemma of getting to know about your characteristics or about your diseases or anything. Uh -huh is not a part of this 0.3%. Okay, thing. okay, okay. So this 0.3, oh, okay. So it's literally only for individualizing pretty much. Yes, so we use that 0.3% for individualization. Okay, and yes. within that 0.3%, we have the short tandem repeats, which are just small, small units of, let's call it DNA that repeats itself within a region. Yeah, so, so it's small units of DNA base pairs. Base pairs yes. that are like the ACTG. Yes. And they repeat themselves within this region. And some people like me may have nine and you may have 15. Yes. And that is what's really, yeah. within that 0.3% differ differentiating us. And I have some from my mom and from my dad. Yes. So my mom gave me nine at one site, I guess. Yes. My dad gave me 13 in a different site. Then that nine and 13 at these two specific sites pretty much identify me. Yes, exactly. And you're 15 at one site and two at another site identify you yeah so it could be 15 and 17 so right, right at one right. point you could be 9 and 13 at the same location A quant and then we have amplification which is just making more of these short tandem repeats more 9 and 13s or more 15 and 17s mm. and then we have the separation 
with the capillary electrophoresis. And I'd be lying if I said I know how to describe that. <laughs> it's basically now separating them out based on their base pair, right. the molecular weight. Uh, separating out based on their molecular sizes. Right, 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 right. So think of it as a, like... Like a, a funnel. Yeah. The small things come through come first from, and the yeah, big, big things, things come out come, last. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Perfect analogy, yes. So if you had a mixture, how would you know which... If you had like a 9, 10, 15, and 17, how would you know that the 9 goes with the 13 or that the 15 goes with the 17? No, you can never know, know that for certain. You can't? So you, no. So but you, you would just know it's two people. So you would need like, I guess in that situation, you would need at least one of the party's DNA. So if if they give you a 9 and a 17, then you know that it's a 13 and a 15 for the other guy because one guy's profile already that you know who he is or she is, you know that guy gave you a 9 and a 17. Right. So if you have a sample in question uh -huh. and if you have two people, one is a suspect and one is the victim, uh -huh. and you see exactly four peaks and no more than four peaks in overall the entire profile, uh -huh. right? Then you know that it's two people. Right. But how likely does that happen? It's possible that at one location you might see six peaks or you see five peaks. So now the, it's a possibility that there are three people. So basically the defense would argue that no, 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 no. This location, there are six peaks. So there is some other person who also contributed to the evidence. So this victim in question, the the, um, suspect. the suspect in question is not the one. It's someone out in the random. Mm. So that's where the likelihood ratio calculation comes in, right, right, which right. is a whole different topic. Right. Um, right, right. Not, I don't guess, but I am getting to learn how important the process is through my PhD. So which is... Good. Stay in school, kids. <laughs> Stay in school. <laughs> but yeah, it's and also it's good to talk about and letting the audience know as to um, how long this processes take and how much uh, it goes into each process and how important each and every step in the DNA pipeline is. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I hope that we could convey to the audience as to. Um, the importance of the five steps in the process and how important they are. And now you guys know how to make a DNA profile. So <laughs> get to it. No, don't get to it. <laughs> get proper training and education and then get to it. <laughs> and then get to it. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Right. But it was fun talking about it. Thank that you, Julian. Good. That was good. Yeah. I, I feel like I understand. So I'm sure some people at home definitely understand how to, yeah. the process of making a DNA profile. And I'm sure you definitely got the process down. Like, you know the names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the steps. five steps. and Yeah. So I might need to know the yeah, I but we'll know. get into that, we'll, right? We'll deep dive into each yeah. one individually in future episodes. Yeah, at absolutely. Some point. Because I definitely understand that when we talk about like alleles, when we talk about profiles, when we talk about stutters, or like how is quantification yeah, that's a couple that, levels deep for sure. It's it's pretty deep, but our aim is in the future episodes to explain this out of in course. detail. But for this episode, just for us to convey the different steps and how the process goes by so i hope you guys got that information from this episode hope you guys enjoyed yeah that's a, that's a good one we should wrap this up then absolutely uh actually i know nitty has been a continuing guest but actually a while ago me and nitty talked about it if she would stay on as our as a co-host and you know she accepted my invitation so you know get used to seeing this team together Yes. We'll, we'll be in studio next week again in person, so that's perfect. You'll, you'll see us together, you know, doing a decent job, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, please stay tuned, guys, and like, share, and subscribe. And um, if you have any questions, suggestions, or if you need to know anything more about any topic that you're interested in related to forensics, please, please write in our comments below. And do not forget, again, to share like and, and subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> and if you don't remember anything else about this podcast you remember the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell we will see you guys next week yes peace <laughs>